Alrighty, mellow greetings everybody. My name is James. I am from the internet and uh, we're going to do something a little different today. I know uh, uh, most days I, I have a whole line of uh, tabs set up across the top of my screen and I'll, uh, I'll review a whole bunch of different stories that kind of interweave and then, uh, you know, I try to, you know, stick the knockout punch at the end. Um, but today I have one single tab and one single story. Uh, and frankly, um, even with everything that's going on with, you know, a quarter of the country being on fire and half the country being inflamed and at an ideological war with the other half of the country and the cratered economy and the global pandemic, I can understand why this fell through the cracks, but it really deserves some airtime. So Pasco Sheriff created a futuristic program to stop crime before it happens. It monitors and harasses families across the country. That's right. If you're a fan of what I guess would now be considered the futuristic police classic minority report with Tom Cruise, when uh, there are cops who are precogs, who have a precognitive ability and can determine people who are going to uh, commit a crime before they actually commit the crime, and then they go out and arrest them or kill them to keep the crime from happening. You know, commit a crime to stop a crime before somebody actually does a crime. This is some funky, funky futuristic shit. I covered a story about this in LA ages ago. Uh, the LAPD tried something similar and it ended predictably as badly as you would think it would when you let a computer algorithm decide who the next criminal is going to be before they actually commit a crime. So here we go. Pasco County Sheriff Chris Noko took office in 2011 with a bold plan to create cutting-edge intelligence program that could stop crime before it happened. What he actually built was a system to continuously monitor and harass Pasco County residents. First, the sheriff's office generates a list of people it considers likely to break the law based on arrest histories, unspecified intelligence, and arbitrary decisions by police analysts. That seems like a totally awesome way to, you know, stop crime. Yeah. Then it sends deputies to find and interrogate anybody whose name appears, often without probable cause, a search warrant, or evidence of a specific crime. Because, of course, why would you need evidence or a warrant or probable cause to go harass private citizens out on the street or in private businesses or in their own homes? I mean, pish posh. Who needs, who needs those things, right? <laughs> Peasants. They swarm homes in the middle of the night, waking families and embarrassing people in front of their neighbors. They write tickets for missing mailbox numbers and overgrown grass, saddling residents with court dates and fines. They come again and again, making arrests for any reason they can. One former deputy described the directive like this, quote, make their lives miserable until they move or sue. In just five years, NOCO's signature program has ensnared almost a thousand people, and at least one in ten were younger than 18. Some of the young people were labeled targets despite having only one or two arrests. Yeah, maybe just take like a quick second and think about that. And think about like if you're a parent and you have like, I don't know, a 13 year old kid who, I don't know, throw a rock through a window and, you know, got charged with vandalism. And, you know, you paid the $50 fine and gave your kid a stern talking to and grounded him or punished him or whatever. And then all of a sudden he pops up in a computer database that spits his name out as one of like the 30 people in the county most likely to commit another crime. And, and now you have police monitoring your child harder than, I don't know, parole officer would, would follow around a parolee who just got out of jail for a previous rape conviction. Rio Wojcicki, 15, became a target in September 2019, almost a year after he was arrested for sneaking into car boards with a friend and stealing motorized bicycles. Those were the only charges against him, and he already had a state-issued juvenile probation officer checking in on him. Yet, from September 2019 to January 2020, Pasco Sheriff's, Sheriff's deputies went to his home at least 21 times. 21 times in 15 months to just harass him and go, the computer tells us you might be about to commit another crime, so we're going to check in on you. Urgh. What the shit is that? 
They showed up at the car dealership where his mom worked, looked for him at a friend's house, and checked his gym to see if he had signed in. More than once, the deputies acknowledged that Rio wasn't getting into trouble. They mostly grilled him about his friends, according to body camera video of the interactions. But he'd been identified as a target, they said, so they had to keep checking on him. Since September 2015, the sheriff's office has sent deputies on checks like those more than 12,000 times. Yeah, remember when people were like, hey, we really want to defund the police? I think perhaps this is why. Because police have used up hours and hours and hours of a billable time to, to you, the taxpayer, to go to people's houses and harass them because a computer algorithm said that they might one day in the future be preparing to commit a crime. And that's a good enough reason to go and use your resources to go harass people at their homes. All right. Where, where, where are all the bootlickers in chat now? Where are you at? Back the blues. Where are you? Where are you? I, I, oh, I can't hear you over the sound of the encroaching fascism in Pasco County. You're going to have to speak up. Deputies gave the mother of one teenage target a $2,500 fine because she had five chickens in her backyard. They arrested another target's father after peering through a window in his house and noticing a 17-year-old friend of his son smoking a cigarette. As they make checks, deputies feed information back into the system, not just on the people they target, but on family members, friends, and anyone else in the target's orbit. That's right, if your kid gets arrested for jaywalking, or vandalism, and they end up in this computer algorithm, the cops will now start looking at you, and your spouse, or your partner, and your parents, and your cousins, and your friends at work. And they're going to start digging into all of them because an algorithm is telling them at some point, your kid is going to become a wanted criminal. So it's better that they know everything about him, all his associates, all his family, and all of their associates before the crime happens. Are you, are you all still back in the blue? Are you all still rocking your thin blue line flag? Really? Okay. In the past two years alone, two of the nation's largest law enforcement agencies have scrapped similar programs following public outcries and reports documenting serious flaws. In Pasco, however, the initiative has expanded. Last summer, the sheriff's office announced plans to begin keeping tabs on people who've been repeatedly committed to psychiatric hospitals. Hey, because you know what totally isn't going to create a horrible incident where somebody might get injured? Sending armed goons to the home of somebody who's recently gotten out of a psychiatric hospital. Once again, when people say defund the police, this is what they're talking about. You know what works a lot better? When you send a social worker to somebody's house who's recently been in a psychiatric institute. Maybe sending somebody who has, I don't know, more than five months of training um, to their house, armed and strapped, Maybe, just maybe, send a normal human being who can actually have a fucking conversation with them rather than shooting their dog, getting them agitated, and then shooting them. Crazy thought, I know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, screw social workers. We should just keep dumping more money into the predictive crime thin blue line people who want to go to your house 21 times in a year and a half to harass you after your child gets arrested once for petty larceny when they're 14 years old. In statements that spanned more than 30 pages, the agency said it stands behind its program, part of a larger initiative it calls intelligence-led policing, which is hilarious because nobody has ever, ever, ever so much as inferred that the police are intelligent. It said other local departments use similar techniques and accused the Times of cherry-picking examples and painting basic law enforcement functions as harassment. I don't know. Uh, going to somebody's house who hasn't committed a crime, who's not in the process of committing a crime, and harassing them at their parents' place of work, their gym, their friends' houses, and their own house 21 times in a little over a year does not sound like a basic law enforcement function. Please correct me if I'm wrong. It's okay, I'm not wrong. The sheriff's office said its program was designed to reduce bias in policing by using objective data. And it provided statistics showing a decline in burglaries, larcenies, and auto thefts since the program began in 2011. Wow, you read that sentence, you'd think, wow, James is full of shit and he's poo-pooing this thing and he shouldn't be because obviously it works. Hmm. Quote, 
This reduction in property crime is a direct positive impact on the lives of citizens of Pasco County. And for all that, we will not apologize, one of the statements said. Our first and primary mission is to serve and protect our community and the intelligence-led policing philosophy assists us in achieving that mission. Um, but Pasco's drop in property crimes was similar to the decline in the seven largest nearby police jurisdictions. Over the same time period, violent crime increased only in Pasco. Here's where I take a moment and I let you all know that I'm in Florida, because there is no state income tax, uh, they inordinately uh, set up speed traps and roadblocks in Florida to hit people with max fine crimes to help pad uh, funding in cities and counties that don't get any grants from the state, which are generated through state income tax because they don't have one. So Florida is known for its over-policing to create revenue as it is. This is just putting that on steroids. Criminal justice experts say they were stunned by the agency's practices. They compared the tactics to child abuse, mafia harassment, and surveillance that could be expected under an authoritarian regime. Quote, morally repugnant is what it is. One of the worst manifestations of the intersection of junk science and bad policing. An absolute absence of common sense and humanity that I have seen in my career, said David Kennedy, a renowned criminologist at the John Jay College of Criminal Justice, whose research on crime prevention is referenced in Pasco's policies. Um, for years, the program's inner workings have remained largely out of public view, even as NOCO has touted its merits during debates and community forums. Uh, reporters combed through thousands of pages of documents, watched hours of body camera footage, and spent months obtaining and analyzing the target list, which had not been previously released. Pasco is an overwhelmingly white county, and the program did not appear to disproportionately target people based on race. But juvenile offenders, regardless of race, were an outsized priority for the intelligence program, according to former deputies. Of the 20 addresses visited most by its dedicated enforcement teams, more than half were home to middle or high schoolers who were identified as their targets. Uh, NOCO took over the Pasco Sheriff's Office in 2011, uh, appointed by Rick Scott. At the time, he was 35 and newly promoted, and he had joined the Sheriff's Office only two years earlier, had deep ties to Republican politics, but far less experience in law enforcement than the outgoing sheriff. He quickly rolled out a plan to remake the department that sounded like a pitch for the Hollywood blockbuster, Moneyball Meets Minority Report. The intent was to reduce property crime. The agency, which has 650 officers and covers roughly half a million people, would use data to predict where future crimes were likely to take place and who was likely to commit them. Then deputies would find these people and, quote, take them out. So property crime is the trigger of this entire thing. The police had not created a super intelligent AI to go out and predict when people are going to go out and rape women or go out and kidnap children or go out and murder somebody. No, they spent all this money, time and effort on an algorithm to protect property. Pasco Sheriff's Office won a $95,000 federal grant, not a lot of money, to upgrade its computer system and hire a small team of civilian analysts. At first, they focused on identifying geographic crime trends and gathering information for people in jail. But NOCO wanted to make proactive strategies and intelligence gathering his agency's central philosophy. All employees were required to take a two-hour course on intelligence-led policing. Uh, he referenced the program often as he ran for election for the first time in 2012 after he was appointed. Uh, some residents appreciated it so much, he boasted in one campaign appearance, they threw deputies a block party. Oh, thank you, government. Thank you for creating a predictive algorithm that will pick anybody out of a crowd and create police harassment. We love you so much. Woo, back the blue, thin blue line. <laughs> Swallows boot. He won the race and continued building his intelligence machine. Today, the sheriff's office has a 30 person section with a $2.8 million a year budget run by a former senior counterterrorism analyst who is assigned to the National Terrorism Center. The number two is a former Army intelligence officer. 20 analysts scour police reports, property records, Facebook pages, bank statements, and surveillance photos to help deputies 
investigate crimes, according to the agency's latest policing manual. Since September 2015, they've also decided who goes on the list of people deemed likely to break the law. Not only is there a huge chunk of people in this country who will, who will back the police no matter what they do, no matter how many people they execute in the street, shoot in the back, no matter how many people's dogs they kill, no matter how many people's daughters they stalk, people will just back them 1,010%. doesn't matter what they do. Now the police are coming for you even if you're not committing a crime, even if you're not planning on committing a crime, even if you're not doing anything remotely illegal, the police, based on an algorithm that they created, are now giving themselves an excuse to come to your place of work, to your family's house, to your house, and harass you until they can find a crime to pin on you or until you finally give up and move. Uh, of course, if every county in America kept adopting this philosophy, there wouldn't be any place to move. So everybody, when I tell you encroaching fascism is a big problem, it's a big fucking problem. Wake up. <laughs>